All right, well, I thought I was going to uh, record the prologue with the other video, but, you know, I may have hit the wrong button. So uh, here we are, back at it. You know, I'm going to mess up a lot, and uh, I'll probably say you know a lot, because that's kind of my little buffer in there, as you know, or um. And so you're just going to have to deal with it, students. Uh, my apologies in advance. Uh, but, yeah, there's not much I can do. So uh, we're going to begin with a couple things we'll point out in your materials here. Uh, you have all your study guides. And I'm just going to click on your Act 1 study guide real quick, and I'll talk to you about uh, what that looks like and what my expectations are for you. I can I can pretty much assure you that your job is to fill out uh, all the definitions here. A literary term like an aside is uh, actions. It's when an actor has lines that are that are, are heard by by another on the stage, but not by everybody. So it's like, you know, you call it a, a side conversation, right? It's actually what it's called. It's to have a side conversations, a blank verse where there, there's there's unrhymed. It's an unrhymed verse. You have characterization. Uh, we have external con external conflicts. We have internal conflicts. A couplet is when two lines rhyme together. Uh, you'll see that quite often. Uh, you'll see it a lot of times in there, like in sonnets, where the first line will rhyme with the third line, the second line with the fourth, and so on and so forth. And you'll pick that off uh, right away in the um, in the prologue. In addition to that, I can assure you that throughout it all, I will answer all the questions that you have in the study guide. I may not go through and answer all of the literary terms, or I may not answer all the vocabulary, uh, but it's still my expectation when you have work time uh, to go and get those things done. And the great thing about about this is that um, you have the opportunity to pause me. You know, you can tell me to be quiet for a minute and uh, not get in trouble. So uh, consider that a lucky thing for yourself. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna focus in on the prologue. And just what I was talking about yesterday in our link here for our audio, you can pull up the Shakespeare uh, Spark Notes, which are, are pretty awesome. And so we're just gonna listen at first to the audio. It may be a little uh, a little loud. You may have to uh, lower down your volume. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm gonna use that audio whenever I can because, uh, well. I have a pretty low voice. You all know that, so we're not going to talk about that anymore. But here we go. Uh, we're going to focus in here on the prologue. So this is on page 735 in your book, and I would highly encourage you to follow along in your book and have your spark notes up as well and to go back and transfer. Uh, but here we go. The Tragedy of Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Whose misadventure piteous overthrows doth with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love, and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end not could remove, is now the two hours' traffic of our stage. The which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. Okay, so a couple things we can pick off right away uh, from William Shakespeare. We can see... That our first line here, dignity and mutiny rhyme together, scene and queen rhyme, foes and throws, life and strife. And as you pick this off, this is a 14-line uh, sonnet, and it's a pretty amazing rhyme. And you can see that uh, there, there's there's just a lot of work put into it, and uh, people would really appreciate this. Uh, you know, this is definitely a gift that William Shakespeare has, and regardless of whether uh, you enjoy listening to William Shakespeare and reading this play. I think we can have the appreciation of his beautiful writing. And I can just tell you point blank, uh, he writes a lot better than me. So it starts here. Uh, we have two households, both alike in dignity, right? Two houses. Uh, we know they're, this is Romeo and Juliet's houses. We have the Montagues. We have Romeo. He's a Montague. Uh, Juliet's a Capulet. And they're both of the high status, all right? They live in Verona. And Verona, Italy is where the story takes place. Uh, so it tells us right away there's a big grudge that's been going on for a long time. There's an ancient grudge 
that breaks into new mutiny. So that tells us that a new a new battle is beginning, and it's where civilians fight other civilians. All right, and so we'll, uh, and then to continue on from forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. So from between both sides, all right, a pair of star-crossed lovers. So people loving each other take their lives. This tells us right away that Romeo and Juliet commit suicide. Uh, we know that before the star story starts. We know that, you know, in the Odyssey, that Odysseus made it home uh, before the story started. Whose misadventure, piteous overthrows, doth with her death bury their parents' tribe. So because of their uh, unfortunate event, their parents grudge with each other between the Montagues and Capulets is uh, is 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 taken over there, right? Uh, the fear of the passion of the death mark love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's edge could not remove. So for two hours, we're going to listen to this. And if you listen really well, you're going to figure out their rest. So pr- pretty awesome, uh, beautiful writing there. Obviously, he writes a lot better than I do. And uh, the uh, speaker we have does a lot better than me. But we go back over to our, our spark notes here. Uh, this is really helpful for you. So in the beautiful city of Verona, where our story takes place, there's a long-standing hatred between the Montagues and the Capulets, right? Our new violence has erupted. The citizens stain their hands with the blood of their fellow citizens. So citizens are fighting other citizens. Two unlucky children of these enemy families become lovers, and they unfortunately commit suicide. But because of their unfortunate death, it puts an end to the parents' feud. And for the next two hours, we're going to watch the story of their doomed love and their parents' anger. We're going to figure out that the why, uh, why. Well, we're going to figure out that nothing could stop it but the char- the children's suicide. And if you listen really patiently, we'll make up for everything else we've left on stage in the prologue. And so, you know, we have a lot of foreshadowing here, a lot, a lot of things that that uh, that that uh, tell us what's going to take place. You know, when when, when we think about our two questions in the prologue, uh, the first one's pretty simple, and I think if you write in complete sentences. Uh, that'll be really helpful for you, but you know we have in what city does the story take place? Uh, that's pretty plain and simple. It takes place in Verona, and we also know uh, why are Juliet and Romeo called star-crossed lovers? And we know they're star-crossed lovers because they have fallen in love with each other, right? But the problem is that their love for each other is with the is with their parents' biggest grudge. Uh, you know, and it causes problems. Like, you know, I know when I was growing up, uh, if I, if my mom and dad didn't like a certain person uh, or if they disagreed with the way that someone was treating their children uh, or the way that someone was acting, they may have a grudge on them. And if they found out that I was like hanging out with them or whatnot, um, it would definitely cause a little bit of um, anger for my parents. And, and so here we have star-crossed lovers and they are Romeo and Juliet loving each other. And they can't. They should not be doing that because the biggest grudge uh, that's been going on for ancient, for many years, uh, is is part of this. And so that puts us through the prologue. And uh, hopefully that makes sense to you. If not, you know, go back, listen to it again, and uh, that's about it. So I hope you have a majestic day, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.